our discussion for uh, the continuous time random variable. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, discuss an interesting function, so called the hazard rate function. So hazard rate functions are very important, you know, especially in survival analysis. Survival analysis is um, is a is a kind of a statistical science actually that deals with the um, survival of the things actually. Um, it could be the survival of um, uh, say, say a company which is say about to default, or it could be a defaultable bond. It could be the survival of the life. It could be the survival of a species. So, so survival analysis basically encompasses a lot of a lot of wide um, kind of application, but it's it's a subject in its own. So we're not going to discuss everything in the survival analysis. I'll just like to talk about what you call the hazard rate <coughs> functions. So to introduce the hazard rate functions, consider a random variable x. Okay. So let's call this random variable x. And um, to make sense of it, let's interpret this random variable x as the lifetime of an lifetime of an object actually. Okay. You know, this object could be machine, this object could be a company, this object could be a species, okay. species. And, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay. If I imagine x is, x is lifetime of some um, object. And imagine x follows some distribution. It follows some distribution. Okay? So not necessarily any particular distribution that we know we have discussed so far. Okay? So I'm not associating any particular distribution to it actually. So it just follows some distribution where f x is the PDF function of the random variable x and f x is the uh, is the uh, the CDF of the random variable x actually. So what I would like to do, I would like to define a function, a hazard function. So let us define what you call a hazard function, and then we're going to interpret it. This function is also called a failure function. Okay, hazard function or the failure function. And how do we define it? We denote this hazard function or the failure function as lambda, lambda of t. And how do you define it? You define it to be um, at any time t. That you define it to be fx of t probability that x survive t units whether t can represent for example time and its units could be minutes and hours or days or years or whatever divided by 1 minus the cdf of t okay so let me write it probably i should write it here so the hazard rate function is defined by fx of t divided by 1 minus the CDF fx of t actually. Okay. <coughs> now this is the definition of this failure function. Now let's let's try to interpret this definition of the failure function um, from an instinct perspective. Let's consider <coughs> the conditional probability that x, which is the lifetime of object, so the x, an, an item, or a machine, or a species, has say survived, so suppose, so let's try to interpret this, suppose that uh, that object has survived survived 
for T units actually. Okay? T units. So unit could be you know any choice of use it could be hours, minutes, you know, etc. Seconds, days, whatever, years, months, whatever you like actually. So suppose that an object has survived for T units and uh, will not survive will not survive in next next dt units where d is the differential of the time okay dt units that is let us consider the probability that x has a survived the t units okay but x would not survive you know the next would not survive in the next dt units of the time actually in other words okay, x has survived t units but x would not survive in dt units in other words its life would end in the next interval that starts from t and ends at t plus dt so it's life because x is representing the lifetime so it life would add somewhere between the interval t to t plus what do you call dt okay <coughs> now let's try to think about this probability explicitly so if I write this probability more explicitly, so let's call this as event A and event B, then we know that the conditional probability of A given B is equal to the probability of intersections divided by the probability of B. So, so this is going to be the probability of X, you know, do not survive the lifetime of the object, you know, does not uh, 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 ends in the next interval dt and x equal to t okay ah sorry okay so it should be bigger than so x the lifetime of because if x is representing lifetime x bigger than t is that the, the lifetime of the object is more than t units okay but it does not survive in the next dt units in other words the lifetime of the the um, the object is sitting inside this interval t to t plus dt okay this interval may so this is what is the case and everything divided by probability x bigger than Now, let's think about this intersection, okay. So which of uh, the event is the bigger and which of the event is smaller? So, so x bigger than t, so if t is an instant, then x bigger than t is low. So it could be all of this line actually, while x between t to t plus dt is just this small part. So we can see that this part of this set is bigger and this set is smaller. Okay, And this set is part of this bigger set actually. So the intersection of this set, in other words x being between t to t plus dt is going to be a subset of x being bigger than t actually okay so this intersection will eventually will become prob probability that x is in the interval t to t plus dt and everything divided by the probability x bigger than t okay now if you make this dt small actually in other words 
if you make this dt small, in other words, if you bring this point really close to this point, which is t, then what would be this probability? You can say that roughly, roughly, this is same as the probability x equal to t. Okay, so roughly you can say, or maybe roughly you can say that this is same as the probability of x equal to t because this is going to get really closer to the t actually and divided by the probability of x bigger than t. Now this probability of x equal to t I can write it as fx of t and probability of x bigger than t I can write it as 1 minus probability of x less than or equal to t or 1 minus fx of t. So, so in other words precisely the same function lambda of t appears again actually. But this lambda of t is now roughly equal to this conditional probability. So whatever the interpretation of this conditional probability is would be the interpretation of the lambda of t because the both are approximately equal. Now what are the conditional uh, interpretation of conditional probability? So the, so the interpretation of the conditional probability, this conditional probability is that if x represents the lifetime of an object, it could be machine, company, species, then this lifetime is bigger than t. In other words, given that the object that is a machine or a species or a you know biological species or some kind of uh, company okay, that has survived t years or t minutes or t seconds or t units given that it has survived t units what is the probability that it will not survive in really short interval of the time actually next coming short interval of the time so it has survived now but it will fail really in 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 in, in, in the near uh, in in really near future actually so this is what the interpretation is. so the prob this probability is representing that what are the chances that x has survived t units okay x has survived t units um, uh, the life of an object has is is over t uh, over time t, but it will die in the upcoming very small interval actually. Okay, it will die out in the upcoming very small interval. So what we can say we can say that this uh, probably I should write something that there must be a small dt here. We must write the small dt. Okay, so this is going to be the lambda t dt. Okay, so the, roughly the interpretation of lambda t could be that that the object machine ne, species ne, company ne, t years, t seconds, t months, t um, what do you call units of time survived kiya hai, magar bilkul near future mein, because this is a really small interval. Theek hai? T ke baad bilkul near future mein wo ye machine die out karne wali hai ya fail hone wali hai ya company default karne wali hai ya species extinct karne wali hai khatam hone wali theek hai so the lambda of t can be interpreted as this conditional probability theek hai now what we are going to do with this lambda of t sabse pehle hum kya karenge now what we can do you can you can see actually that q ke lambda of t depend karta hai kis par pdf par or um, cdf par to agar aapke paas koi bhi random variable ho jiska aapko pdf or cdf pata ho to aap us random variable ke liye failure function determine kar sakte hain so in other words a failure function can be determined through what do you call the pdf are the CDF of the given function of the given random variable, which is distribution. Ho. Um, 
and similarly we're going to show that a a random variable can be completely determined through the failure rate actually just a random variable completely determined kiya ja sakta hai apne pdf se bilkul isi tarike se aap random variable ko completely determine kar sakte hain uske failure rate se hazard rate se theek hai yani jaise lambda ki madad se f कंप्यूट किया जा सकता है या एफ की मदद से लैम्डा कंप्यूट किया जा सकता है बिल्कुल इस तरीके से अगर लैम्डा आपके पास गिवन हो तो यू कैन कंप्यूट व्हाट यू कॉल द पीडीएफ एंड द सीडीएफ ऑफ द फंक्शन सो इंटरचेंजेबल इंटरचेंजेबली इफ यू नो द पीडीएफ फॉर अ रैंडम वेरिएबल यू नो द हैजर्ड रेट फंक्शन एंड इफ यू नो द हैजर्ड रेट फंक्शन यू कैन फाइंड द पीडीएफ एंड द सीडीएफ ऑफ द फंक्शन एक्चुअली सो यू कैन डिटरमाइन ऑल दैट सो लेट्स डू एन एग्जांपल फर्ज कर लें कि हम एक्सपोनेंशियल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए हैजर्ड रेट फंक्शन कंप्यूट करने की कोशिश करते हैं सो लेट्स ट्राई टू कंप्यूट द हैजर्ड रेट फंक्शन और द फेलियर फंक्शन लैमडा ऑफ टी फॉर एक्स दैट इज एक्सपोनेंशियली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड विद द पैरामीटर्स लैमडा ठीक है अगर एक्स एक्सपोनेंशियली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड है विद द पैरामीटर्स लैमडा तो वी नो दैट के जी उसका जो सी डी एफ होता है पी डी एफ होता है दैट इज लैमडा ई टू द माइनस लैमडा एक्स लैमडा टी फॉर द टी वेगर दर इक्वल टू जीरो इक्वल टू जीरो फॉर टी लेफ्ट एंड देर जबकि उसका जो सी डी एफ होता है एक्सपोनेंशियल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन का दैट इज बेसिकली वी कंप्यूटेड इट टू बी द वन माइनस ई टू द माइनस लैमडा टी तो यह हमने कंप्यूट किया So if you know the both of these, then this random variable के लिए यानी exponential random variable के लिए the hazard rate function or the failure function, ठीक है, is going to be uh, what lambda e to the minus lambda t over uh, one minus f x of t. So one minus कर देंगे तो it's going to be e to the minus lambda t uh, हो जाएगा बिकॉज वन वन विल गेट कैंसल एंड यू कैन गेट व्हाट डू यू कॉल सिंपली लैम्डा सो द हेजर रेट आर द फेलियर रेट फॉर समथिंग फॉर सम ऑब्जेक्ट सम स्पीशी सम व्हाट डू यू कॉल ऑब्जेक्ट के जिसका लाइफ टाइम एक्स जो है वो लाइफ टाइम को रिप्रेजेंट कर रहा हो और वो एक्सपोनेंशियली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड हो तो उसके लिए जो फेलियर रेट है वो बेसिकली ये लैमडा है एंड वी नो अबाउट द लैमडा दैट द लैमडा इज नॉट लैमडा बट द वन ओवर लैमडा इज बेसिकली द एवरेज टाइम यू नीड टू वेट टू गेट अ सक्सेस एक्चुअली आर टू आर टू सी द इवेंट दैट यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन ठीक है सो वी नो द इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ इट सो वी कंप्यूटेड वॉट यू कॉल द हैजर रेट फॉर एक्सपोनेंशियल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इसी तरीके से आप हैजर्ड रेट दूसरी जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हैं स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल है या यू नो यूनिफॉर्म है या जो दूसरी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हैं आप उनके लिए भी हैजर्ड रेट्स जो हैं वो कंप्यूट कर सकते हैं ओके अब आ जाते हैं नेक्स्ट फैक्ट की तरफ के के जैसे हम डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन से हैजर्ड रेट मालूम कर सकते हैं फेलियर रेट मालूम कर सकते हैं किसी भी रैंडम वेरिएबल का वी कैन गो अदर वे राउंड इन अदर वर्ड्स लैमडा ऑफ टी यूनिकली डिटरमाइंस रैंडम वेरिएबल ठीक है यानी अगर आपके पास कोई भी रैंडम वेरिएबल है जिसके बारे में आप जानते हैं लैमडा ऑफ टी तो आप उस रैंडम वेरिएबल की डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन भी निकाल सकते हैं पीडीएफ भी निकाल सकते हैं सो यू कैन नो एवरीथिंग अबाउट दैट रैंडम वेरिएबल जस्ट बाय यूजिंग व्हाट यू कॉल द फेलियर रेट सो इट्स रियली द द कन्वर्स ऑफ व्हाट यू हैव डन हियर इन ऑर्डर टू डू सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द डेफिनेशन That is f x of t um, by one minus f x of t, but this is going to be 
affects or affects small PDF or CDF में क्या relation होता है? We know that the CDF can be treated as the derivative of what do you call um, uh, derivative of the CDF? PDF is the derivative of CDF. And then what you can do is that you can solve this differential equation. So you, you take lambda dt and you have dfx of t and everything divided by say fx of t and now integrate this onto the both sides say between 0 to t. Okay? Say between 0 Now, what would be this integral? So, if you integrate this guy, okay, so it's like df and 1 minus f. So, if you can make a substitution actually, you can say that, okay, let's take u to be your fx and du will be dfx. So, it is, it is going to be like du, du by 1 minus u actually. Okay? du by 1 minus u and then you can integrate so I'm just directly writing the result so on integrating this guy 0 to t lambda of t dt so on integrating this guy you're gonna get something like uh, log of 1 minus fx of t okay? and uh, you're gonna have what do you call um, so these are simple small calculations you're going to have a minus here but I can send that minus here okay? because 1 minus u go when we integrate it is going to be log of 1 minus u divided by the derivative of you know 1 minus u that is going to be minus 1 so this integral ke samne, yani is in, uh, log ke samne minus log but I am writing that minus here and I'm also writing a constant for example k here actually. Okay. So I'm writing a constant k here. So up kya karte up kya karte So now my task is to find this fx of t. So I can find this fx of t by what? Taking the exponential of the log. Okay, so I can take the exponential of the log. Okay, so you can like the exponential of the log so 1 minus fx of t is going to be um, going to be what? So it's going to be e to the k okay, times exponential uh, maybe e exponential minus integral from 0 to t uh, lambda of um, okay, lambda of t dt. Uh, I can use a different variable here. Doesn't matter. So this is what it is going to be. R f x of t can be completely determined by one minus e to the k times uh, e to the k times exponential of say zero to t lambda of t and what we call dt okay now if you assume so if you take for example uh, you know we know about the um, what do you call uh, uh, fx of zero so the fx of zero is really one okay fx of 0 is 1. In other words, if you if you apply say t equal to 0 on, 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 on this condition, you're going to get k equal to 0. Okay? So you have this and you can get, get k equal to 0 and hence your explicit fx of t is going to be 1 minus exponential yani e to the 0 to t minus lambda of t and what do you call it? dt. So this is what is the case. And once you have, for example, 
this fx of t, you can differentiate and you can get what you call the pdf of the random variable. So what does these calculations are telling you? That if for a random variable, if you only know the survival function, uh, the hazard rate function or the failure function, then you can find the distribution, the pdf and the cdf of x by given lambda of t. And what would be that? That would be, what do you call this uh, uh, formula actually, okay? So just put your survival function here, integrate, and you're going to get what you call your CDF. And once you know CDF, you can differentiate and you can get a PDF. So, so as, as I said, this is really the complement of what you did here. If you know the PDF and the CDS for, for a given random variable, you can find the survival rate function. And a random variable, continuous time random variable can be completely determined uniquely through the survival rate function actually. Okay? So you can characterize a random variable through a survival rate function. Um, what could be, say for example, one of the examples, imagine for say a given random variable, you know, you know that the survival rate is something linear actually, say A plus BT. Okay? So imagine that survival rate is linear for a given a random variable, any given random variable. So the question is what would be the distribution function for this actually? So what you can do, you can just substitute your lambda into the integral and solve that integral and do everything. So you will see that you are going to get something like e to the minus a t minus b t squared by 2 actually. So this would be the, uh, the CDF of that random variable x whose survival rate is this actually. And hence you can find its PDF as well. It's not a big deal. Just uh, differentiate uh, our, uh, yes. Just uh, differentiate this with respect to the uh, t, and you're going to get the PDF of it actually. Okay. So, so that's something interesting about the survival rate. Okay. You know, in finance, in the context of finance, we're going to talk up basically in our finance course about, um, for example, say defaultable bond or defaultable. Um, you know, some security, defaultable loans, or defaultable companies. So, in that, um, in that situation, or in that case of the defaultable bond or defaultable, um, say, uh, uh, defaultable uh, company, defaultable bond, in that situation, uh, you know, uh, uh, the failure rate becomes an important quantity. So, we're gonna, we're gonna use it those situations as well. Let's do an example. Let's do do an example and let's put this stuff into what do you call work actually. Okay. Now, imagine there are two people, okay. two people, so one is a smoker, one person is a smoker and one person is a non-smoker person, okay. So the common myth or maybe medical myth or whatever is that the non-smoker lives twice as uh, as smoker person. Okay. So in other words, the smokers has a short, you know. Um, uh, uh, has a small age as com or a little age as compared to what you call non-smokers actually because their lungs becomes compromised on average their um, uh, their kidneys becomes compromised so you know they, 
some people get cancers and different things actually. Um, so, you know, it is believed that if you are a non-smoker, then you're going to live longer than smoker actually. But, but what the question that we would like to answer is an interesting question. So we like to address this question. If we assume this fact, this myth, 